can take any day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. That's not a writing tip. Oh, see, I told you something was going on. Are you sure you're not cheating, Sean? Cheating? Cheating? Bro, no, are you breaking the fourth wall again? Because we mean cheating. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Jokey Jokey Literature Club. I'm excited to get back in this. I, I, I hope it gets juicy in this in this gameplay. And as y'all can see, I am dressed for the occasion. I got all pink on because you see it's a pink background. This it just happened to be that way. And my shirt also says don't laugh at your girlfriend's shirt. So if any of you wanna laugh, just read this. Remember that. So let's get back into this. You can use the skip button to fast forward text you've already read. I don't think I've read this though, so I'm not even going to pay attention to that. Phew! I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone was judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. Wait, hold on. Sorry y'all, I had to go get some water because I remembered that I needed some water for this game. Okay. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper and sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watched each of their expressions change. Masuki's eyebrows fail in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Masuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. That's kind of rude. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah! Thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <clears throat> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Shoma did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come up, come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> and Sean liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Masuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> That's not what I... Uh, um, you're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Sean appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? How do, you, how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? You see this right here? They already fight over... They already fight over me. Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would have deliberately gone out my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> uh, um, is everyone okay? Does it look like it, Sayori? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who boomed Max to do a side figure as soon as Sean started showing up. Oh. Um, listen, I have nothing to do with that, so I mean, I don't know what I can say about that. 
Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! They, they both told her to go away! I, I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turned towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing here. How? Did y'all not see me? I was standing here the whole time, listening to you two girls bicker. Sean, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get up on herself, learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all complicated for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Sean. Wait, wait, wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to com convey expressive feelings and its meaning the most effectively. I, I was messing up right there. Avoiding them is not only necessarily ruining yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Sean? Please do not make me choose, because I do not want to choose. Um, well? Yo, they're going to make me choose. Dot, dot, dot. How did I get dragged in this in the first place? Exactly. It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. <sighs> I told you I didn't want to choose. Well, I mean, we are trying to get closer to Natsuki. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I have to go with Natsuki. Um, Yuri, you're really talented. Uh, uh, well, but Natsuki has a point. I think that I wrecked my brain in an attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with few words can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader's imagination take over. And Natsuki's poem did a really good job of that. Yeah! It did, didn't it? Aha! Shows how much you know! Th th that's not... Natsuki. I think that's enough. Come on now, like, why are you, why, why are you still going on about it? Huh? Me? But she was so mean to me. Natsuki's voice whines. Look. What we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vigorously. Yeah, so... You don't need to feel threatened. You're a really great writer, Natsuki. Huh? Natsuki's voice gets caught in surprise. Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri. Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean everything she said, so you don't need to feel threatened either. Well, if you say so. Hey! It's not like you need to apologize for me, Sean. Sheesh! Natsuki takes a breath. I... The thing about... Uh, Natsuki glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? Unsurprisingly, Natsuki has a harder time with it than she boasted. Sarah and Monica look away. Hmm. Anyway... The thing about your boobs... I, I didn't mean it, okay? That's all. Now she moves away, looks away, avoiding eye contact with her. Yeah, you're not so beautiful, you. Sayori. Dot dot dot. I I'll go mix some tea. Eh? I was just trying to help. I'm sure she appreciates Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Well, now that we're past that, everyone read each other's poems, right? I hope it was worthwhile for everyone. Especially you, Sean. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, why especially me? And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from the lazy round we got a little too used to. <laughs> ah, 
so my joining the club was responsible for ruining the atmosphere? No, 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 not at all. There's still time before we go home. So we'll all relax for a bit. Of course, besides chatting, we can get at your related things in the club room. So maybe you can take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. Huh? About what? That's not the most important thing about the literature club. The most important thing is having fun! <laughs> of course. Well, I guess that's why you're the vice president, CEO. <laughs> in the end, though, Monica is right. Being in the literature club probably means I can't spend all my time doing nothing. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to eat. How did you feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. <laughs> Sean, how about you? Yeah, I say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. We're just gonna keep doing this, like... And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. Dot dot dot. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems that he likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Sean! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Ciara views at me. It truly has been a while since Ciara and I spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Then? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Nesky. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time I see them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't. You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew! You know, Sean, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest, and I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Everything is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sally still hasn't caught to the kind of situation I'm in. Yeah, like, come on. Sure, being friends with anyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? No, it doesn't. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than her. It's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah, let's do this! Okay, here goes the poem thing again. Now, if I remember, Natsuki likes stuff that is cute. Okay, um, what color work? Or blanket? I would try blanket. Yes, I was right about that one. Pink? She's pink. Um, anime? Yes. Play? No, that's Sayori, darn it, no. Let's not lose this. Vanilla? Okay, good. Uh... Strawberry. Yes! Alright, I'm getting good so far. Just look for cute things. Bubbles. That, yep. Got that right. Marshmallow? Yes! Uh, Fluffy. I think I'm gonna get this. Chocolate. Okay, I think I got enough words to... To be good with her on this one. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Shuma. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things for you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. 
Will you come and eat a bite of snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. She probably going she probably gonna ask me for money. She probably trying to trick me. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Ari? Say look. But he already knows. My character already knows. Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh-uh. So Ari notices and retrieves her cleaning purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and the contest spill into the desk. Only two small coins fell out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But here's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. I was going to own. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> there is some new goodness. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in a book as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. Yeah, okay. You already figured out that you was. It was just something in my book. Lying. That's not good. Don't lie. You read. Tell Sean to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a vision this little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Dot dot dot. Ah! Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. Really. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of it. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. I said it in the wrong place. That! Still, coming from you, say, um, I guess a little, there's a little depth inside of all of us, isn't there? Not me. Don't put me in that. <laughs> Don't let her. Oh, that's me. Don't let her fool you. Sari knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing you to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have club if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had the trick not to keep into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sari. <laughs> Dang, what the hell just hit her face? <laughs> Come on! Out of nowhere, something smacks the area in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... It? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sierra glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution, excuse me. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you grab by the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> That's okay. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sari hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it, girl. Sari rapidly tears, tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Sierra suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I think my tongue! <clears throat> she can go being the clutch that she is. <laughs> We're going through a lot over just one cookie. Masuki takes a bag of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Masuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat, goes behind Masuki, then wraps on the Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. 
Cookie still in the end. Now, Suki reaches up to nudge Sari off on of Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Masuki's cookie. You dirty mother. Wow. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Mouthful Sari trots away to safety. Sneaky. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you still say yo? Eh? Masuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club. Where's she at then? Where's she at? Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? No question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just has something to do today. She, she's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Why would you agree to something like that? You, I mean, do you really think that about yourself? Like, you talk down and stuff like that? Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry! I, I, I'm super sorry! Ah, there you are. Late. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys won't worry or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over our boyfriend after all. You're so strong, Willard. The boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quickly glances at me. Well, why are you glancing at me after you said that? But, ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my life period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Sean. She's making her decision on me? Wow. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I, I didn't mean to any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really left a chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischief, mischievous escapade. I said that wrong, but whatever. I'm sure Masuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sari somehow already finished her entire cooking. Yori is back to her book, and Nasuki disappeared into the closet. Ugh! I hear Nasuki uttered and ex. ex <laughs> she seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Oh, I like this. We get the closet. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Masuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You you read manga, right? Ah. Sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it to figure out where the other person stands. How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What is that supposed to mean? I I see. There's a long volume of man got a and stick, a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I'll pull it out of the stack. There it is. My suit stash is out of my hand. Girl, I was going to give it to you. You didn't have to snatch it. She then turns to a box of mud mango and sets the volume right to the middle of the rest. Aha! Much better. Seeing a box set with one button missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. 
I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either out of my demographic or it's just simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go through you can go do it through that glass door. She points to the classroom door. Hey hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was a tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Sean. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Masuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoved the book right into my hands. Okay, okay. Ah. I stared at the cover. It featured four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly low. Don't just stand there. Oh, uh. Masuki dragged my arm and pulled me out of the closet. Uh oh. She then take a seat against the wall, beneath the window seals. She pats on the ground next to her, seeking to sit there. Oh, here we go! No! Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Well, why's that? Well, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. <gasps> yeah, she got a little surprised. Just say that. Don't make me feel weird about it. Masuki claws her arms and scooches an inch away from me. S Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing, because it's not. <laughs> I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Masuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder. Much more eager to begin reading Maya. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the other volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typically, slice of life there. I kind of lied about what she's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously! You think that I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is just about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at ice, excuse me, the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get all into their backstories, and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good. There are so many touching parts. Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Uh, Masuki gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't seen you at your full power. Hmm, good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Masuki paused for a moment, as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. Why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence. I just happened to get in the bacon around the same time I got this mango. Like, I would never get to anything just because it's in a mango. I feel bad for anyone that impression. Haha. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Masuki's interest in bacon. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a mango, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oh, we are a little closer, we're a little closer, y'all. Dot, dot, dot. We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Dot, dot, dot. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I, I, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. 
I always get excited when I can reach into my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? You, you don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't even know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, sorry. Oof. Like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up with them without them being all like, Eh, you still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Okay, okay, let's not get violent now. Hold on. Ugh, I know those types of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who won't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated toward the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, <laughs> which part was accurate? Like, I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Manka was kind of a jerk about it. <clears throat> I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? No words. Dot dot dot. So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Masuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Masuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Huh? I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Masuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bouncy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite memory with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express expressing words to feeling you get and connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Masuki for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile even to myself. And comes Monica, finally. Okay, everyone. Eh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Dot dot dot. Oh, come on! Could your time be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Yo, oh, you two are pretty up cozy over there. <laughs> eh? Ah! Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright. Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it to Masuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Ah, yeah, but... Monica just said, Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course! It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow, so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you! Uh, yeah, um... I'm gonna have her not kill me, so we're not gonna bend it. By tomorrow? I only got part way through the run so far. It might fall, I might fall behind with some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose it's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Masuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully sit the book into my bag. You know we gotta show our home to Masuki first. Come on now. Y'all already know this. Dot dot dot. Nasuke reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. Right now, she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? No, I mean, you know. Nasuke struggles to find the word she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. But I guess I just got lucky with this one. 
Yeah, exactly. She's so bossy. Like, she is pushy. I don't understand. Why you gotta be like that, girl? Man, I kinda like it, though. I ain't gonna lie. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I, I mean, I mean, but, but, no, no, I mean, ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Masuki shoved the poem back towards me. Huh, reading it again. I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and dopey dopey. I don't even know what dopey dopey means. It would only impress, you know, girls who like those kinds of things. <laughs> For some reason, Masuki is incredibly easy to see through, knowing she likes it. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Alright, let's see what we got here. And you like spiders. Oh, hold on, I need some water before I read this. Okay. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. And the world is better off without spider lovers. lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of poems is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... Oh, that doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Do you have one? One of those? I'm wondering now. Something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people need really need to learn respect for others for liking weird things. <laughs> well, you're definitely right about that. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. Don't don't get cocky now. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from me. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so too, so ah. So look forward to that. Alright, who's next? Who's next? Uh I would just go down the line, but I don't know. Let me show let me show it to Monica. Hi again, Sean. I I, I feel something. Like I, I feel there's some kind of connection to it that we don't know. I don't know. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> well, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I get my poem Monica. Da da da. Alright. I like it, Sean. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. About that. <laughs> Oh jeez. 
no, 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 no. It kind of could be think something Natsuki would write. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. Why any chance you have read anything by Shell Sil Silverstein? No. Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. But sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Nasuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her. Filler? I don't even know how y'all use that word. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning though. So I can see why it's kind of your poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Let's take a look. Save. Okay. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... California? A meaningless noise. The noise. It won't stop. Violent. Radiant waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a violin on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? The heck does that mean? I, I don't know what that means, but uh, I don't know. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess the, that's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Well, I never said that. It's just a stupid fly. It's just the kind of thing I've, got, I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words totally changed the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. What noise? I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking a poem what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem could be as abstract as a physical expression or a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's my Nicholas writing technique day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. That's not a writing tip. Oh, see, I told you something was going on. Save your game. Is she talking to us? Because my character in the game can't save his game. Well, yo, I'm, we starting to get we starting to get somewhere. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Yo, just for that, I'm gonna save right now because yo, I feel like something. I don't know. Wait, is this tip even about writing? That's what I ask. You know what the hell you're doing. I, I, you know what the hell you're doing. I ain't even, What am I even talking about? Well, she, she, she just broke the fifth wall, bro. I, yo, I told you there was something with her. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Uh-uh, yo, uh-uh. That just threw me off guard. All right, Sayori, she's next. Oh, look. I like this one, Sean. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. <laughs> I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. You don't try to be nice. Don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, I'd rather just hear it. No, no, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Sean. Never ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one then? Um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if the poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes you feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works, though. 
then again, I guess the main deal is a pretty, a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of right you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <clears throat> Why don't you at least try giving me some thought? Hmm? I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Huh? Sometimes a bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Okay, she she's starting to seem a little sad to me. Well, I, listen, there's something wrong with everybody here, and I just I'm just now figuring it out. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something so something sad, you know. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little head and make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Sean. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Yeah, can I? Alright, these poems are getting longer. Bottles. I pop off my stuff. Like a little cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger it and pluck one out. It's warm and tender, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. She talk about me? Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow off. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelves took me some more. My friend took me my locked front door. Um, finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. When they come in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let them go, it shattered against the top of my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in charge all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. You know, these poems are, I feel like there's a meaning to that, but I just, I, I man, I'm, yo, I'm starting to get a little worried. Holy crap, Sherry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica told me a whole lot. Oh, she did, didn't she? Listen, we already know there's something not right here. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. You're lying. It is creepy. Maybe because I'm so used to being so used to being, being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Well, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. Isn't that was isn't that like Monica said that, didn't she? Oh my gosh, you've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep fighting until I die. Don't say it like that. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something instead of dropping it one minute a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it all for me to be pessimistic. Uh, and the last one is Yuri. I'm sorry, Yuri. I, 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 I don't want it to be you last, but uh, I'm figuring out stuff as I go. Ah, is it my turn? 
Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Mm, I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Sean. Were you inspired by Natsuki film? Everybody gets it. They know what I'm trying to do. Or Sayori, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri! Eh? I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I, I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mom, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid about to be a little more dark. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain, turning into a bunch of gears. Have that in your mind, wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to enable your reader to see it in your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. But yeah, that's what we're here for. Is, is this the poem you for today? Your mind is hand from her poem. Whew, the raccoon. Move on. Move on. Alright. Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. I'm sorry, I'm being stuck because this this handwriting. My attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, mean, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. So, well aware that the raccoon was fed, it will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increases is increased. What the? It fades and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. Yo, there's something about all these poems right now, but I this one I can't really figure it out. That very the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely Bruh. Oh! I didn't mean to put I wasn't done. Um I was a little more darling with this one yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, which you poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, but I can't even figure out what this supposed to mean. Well, I don't think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels me to indulge in more usual hobbies. It's these sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about it. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm? Did Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being rid of for a strange interest? Really? She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? <laughs> Please don't tell her I said that! <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be rambling a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. Okay everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so we can come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We just end up embarrassing ourselves through like getting any new members. That's concerning of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. 
See, I always been looking at person who had this last appearance and kept out doing their thing. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for their thing. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about all of it. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite for the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let someone else come up and recite, let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sally's put the all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sally, you has been coming the poster. Holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. You wouldn't think that's is that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nasu. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it really shakes a heavy feel. Guys! No, sir. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Masuki really have never shared their poem for anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole group full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. Dot dot dot. But, but, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. When we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show you what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right! And it's the reason we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all of it takes is and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and you're the film, then I know you can do it. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Once you can hear you mean silent. Slurry looks very. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I, you know, I think that Slurry and Monica are trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, well maybe, but... Dot dot dot. It looks like Nasuki doesn't have any arguments left. But, uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Nasuki. What about you, Yuri? Dot dot dot. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I guess I really don't have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone? You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming in. Let's try to write poems for tomorrow, too. It's been really working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same with you after say in Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, why is he trying to impress her? Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! I will come with Sayori once again. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori was being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Dot dot dot. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um. I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how you get to... I, I, I mean... Sorry, from her words. So let's just say that one day, Masuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? Where did that come from? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on a spot here. <laughs> well, damn! Don't... Don't make me choose. Cause I bet you it's not gonna be the good one. I wanna say it's still walk home with her, but then again it's like, ah, this is really hard. I'm gonna try this one. Welcome home with Nasuki, huh? 
Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Cause we already know what we're trying to do. I mean, I think would, I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. What? Need you? Sorry. I can't figure out how you're seeing things through your, in your head right now. So sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. Cow safe the trail is on. I'm left feeling awkward. But it's kind of hard for to track me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival was only a few days away. Who knows what happened in that time? Alright. Home, home, home. Oh my gosh, I've been recording for that long. I didn't even mean to push anything. This is a long one because I'm, I'm, I'm getting good with this. I think I messed up. And here comes Monica, the first one I see. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Yeah, come on. Get together, you're the president. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like she's somehow lying. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't all for you, all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. <sighs> I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Nasuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat and eat all delicious kinds of food. I said, I said it backwards. Kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sierra all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? That's a random ass question. Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Well, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ica. It's time to stop! <laughs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> exactly, we're doing we're in English here, not freaking Japan. We're not Japanese, come on. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as yours or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me, where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori. Is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. Oh no. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah! Ah! Hey, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Well, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Nah, there's something off. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sari showed me a big smile. Fake smile, that's a fake one. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so, I will at glance at Sari before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation I already dis dispersed with everyone back at the usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's doing anything about Sari recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be they must be spending a lot of time with him. That Timmy approached Monica, shuffling through some papers at her desk. Show him, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sierra recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across from the Sayori, idly dragging her rubber lace up and down her desk. Well, that doesn't sound good. Maybe there's something in her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Sean. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. 
She's always talking about things that bother her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I dropped it down. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the web baby my club member she won. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Yeah, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing up personal interest. Personal interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing in her mind is you. Why me? Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sorry talked about you more than anyone else you know. Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sorry is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> that's so funny, Sean. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Dot dot dot. Ah, I, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? Seems like you know a whole lot. Seems like you know a whole lot. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Martha smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that she wouldn't be able to get her hands out of her, her words off my head. Martha stands up from the desk, walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't really hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Oh, here comes Masuki. Hey, you. I have a name, you know. Eh? I look to see Masuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. Yeah, you are. I was just... Masuki rests down on her side. She's holding the volume of the manga in her hand. <clears throat> oh yeah, we promised her we'd beat the rest of that. Okay, we didn't do it. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now that you're making me now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something bothers me, you just can tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about her anything. She got the moments that last for her. Nah, I'm pretty much making it seem like a bigger girl than it is. I just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she's pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, Masuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. In that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would have been the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. She really is a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, don't get the wrong idea or anything. You've just been friends for a long time. It's no more to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Liar! Jeez, if you're fine, well, let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. I pulled the first volume of Paul Figure out from my bag. Masuki takes it to my hands, quickly turns it over, and soon you can check the windows. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just, I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't get people in my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't know. Really. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? I'm sorry, I cannot stop. This might be just <sighs> two hours. I don't know, man. My super makes her way to the closet. I follow. Back to the closet. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Ah, the chapter ended when Manoli and Alice found. Monica! 
That's what we voice from you. Resonates from us inside the closet. Eh? Up here inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you read my manga again? <sighs> sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. So I had to move some stuff to clean up a little bit. It's all there. I just had to organize a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her neck. <laughs> Jeez. This is so inconvenient. Yeah, you, you, you're short, so that must not be good for you. I'm moving all these back down. There's plenty of room on the shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Masuki. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a flat tool stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I, I can get them myself. Masuki grabs the tool from the wall and tells him, You think I'm too short or something? Yeah, I actually do. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I knew it. Well, you know what? Just watch me. And Suki hops into the store, which ends up being a little wobbly because it's collapsed design. Ah, careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Masuki's figure to reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to see that books, but Masuki's being stuck on his useful. Masuki uses her finger to scoop one of the small boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Come on! The box suddenly tips. Masuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. <laughs> Losing balance, Masuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. Nice. She holds the box tri triumphantly. There! Having on this veil, Masuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. You don't need to prove yourself to me. No water. No water. There's no way you'll be able to even get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach you, so just... I said I could do it! I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. My Suki first so they pass without the closet. Let's see... The classroom chairs have the desk attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Aha! My Suki trots over to the cheek desk where right? the computer chair behind her. She rolls on it, and its wheels back into the closet. Ah, it's a little dangerous since the chair is swoopers and rolls, but I've already learned my lesson, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. I was just gonna... I super promise to the chair, and slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the door and simply watch. Oh, I like this little cup for you right here. Ah, there we go. See, I can easily do it now. My super grabs the stack of money and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Wow! Yeah, it seems like you're doing a good job of that. The chair swivels. My super catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? You told me you didn't want my help. So why are you going to say the opposite of what you just said earlier? <sighs> Girls, man. Sometimes they just say the opposite. Who was exactly? Who was it who told you not to help? Exactly. Yeah, 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 I got you. I hold the chair when you can just back up. I can I can almost see up her skirt. Hold on now. Let's not be a pervert, even though we're trying to get close to her. Let's not do that. Gah! I force myself to turn away. Once we can seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes I'll be dead. Oof. Masuki wraps her arms around the pocket girl's box so he's the largest one on the shelf. Heavy. Hey, Sean. I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. Eh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. Alright. Let me just stand up. I said I'd use my grip from the chair. What do you mean stand up? Masuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? <laughs> Masuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Masuki, the box! What are, what are you looking at? You're trying to look at my... my... Masuki's leg shake. Yeah, um... I, I'm not! I was just... Masuki, don't try to move! 
Just give me the box. You pal! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But, but, I'll do it myself. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think you can do it yourself. You share something sweet between Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Come on! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from the road, not feet. Uh oh, you're in some trouble. Frankly, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hand, and the books go flying. I got you! Yeah, I don't think you got her. What you got was hit with her whole body. The full force of Masuki's body against me throws to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. My Tuki tries to shield herself with her own arms, and her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh. My right arm and back seriously felt the impact. Oh, oh. Slowly, not Suki comes to her senses. Yeah, she presses her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Now Suki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Okay, close, close. Yeah, a fist pounds into my chest. Now Suki then holds herself up to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over there? And here comes Monica, like, oh my gosh. I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the leg on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill the club members or something? No key, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Is that, is that what's happening? I don't know. Jeez! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I I didn't. Somehow it's impossible to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything. I swear. Her. I know. I know. Don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no. My my. Uh? I look down. Masuki's kneeling on the floor, holding in the books that are scattered all over. It's large. Oh my gosh. Please. Along the page that she's definitely trying to smooth out. Ah, it must have landed on the page. Masuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the bookshelf and throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. Oh, Masuki, are you? No! Masuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Ah, I I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so. Masuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Masuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It, it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Masuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and... Dot, dot, dot. Masuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah. I picked up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help you This will help cheer you up a bit, right? You can get started on it once I'm done with you. Masuki looks up into her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to you. Eh? That sounds really strange coming from Masuki. I didn't expect that at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a, a friend, you know? <laughs> Masuki moves her head, stiffens another sob. I'm not sure what just happened to me today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple of minutes of silence between us and between gathering and scattered books, I make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Masuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done. And I hoist onto the box. I hoist the box onto the shelf where most people want to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of our books to the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Once you can avoid your gaze. Hey, thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Once you can hold the ball and I sit aside my hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you say. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist. You sit in the same spot as last time. I was the second of all. 
and she was really cooking and cooking, laughing and cleaning things out. She was finally being sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and backing the angles. In the end, I'm pretty sure that I have everything tied in with this manga. I guess Masuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention and she's this time to share phone with me. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I returned to my seat and slipped and put them to, to my bag. You know I gotta come on now. That's not even a question. Masuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Confused. Is it that bad? No, 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 it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems were supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously, you think I let you enjoy yours writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, uh, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you. Oh. Nasuki face freezes like she just realized something. You. You're trying to impress me? Nasuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem with her time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters onto the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> Red face Nasuki quickly walks out of the room. I think she likes this all. Why are you the next person I see? Whoa! Why are you the next person I see? Hey Sean, did you do something with Nasuki? I just saw a rush shot like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No! I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Mom that I'm trying to press Nasuki. Hmm? Nasuki sees the poem down on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads it through, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Nasuki, didn't you? Look, she already figured it out. She, she already got this all played out in her head. I, I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Sean? Cheating? Cheating? Bro, are you breaking the fourth wall again? Because we mean cheating. Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. No, you're not. No, you're not. I didn't understand that joke at all. Yeah, I do, but this character doesn't. Listen, she's breaking the fourth wall. Anyway, how do you think Nasuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Nasuki comes up and snatches the phone out of Monica's hands. Neither of us have noticed her re-enter the room. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. What? The show me this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Ugh. Nasuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem was strictly for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Sean is done sharing his poem with everyone. It's not anyone who wants to read just anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. Oh, no, 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 no. If you insist... What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Ah, uh, Nasuki. I'll give you the poem, but it's that's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't even got to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Sean is right, Nasuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Dot, dot, dot. Fine. Nasuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Alright. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. I sure reaching you, reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The worlds in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your waves away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart beat in a way that you thought had left long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in the pile of sand. 
bathe in some breeze and hold my hand, wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. No, I didn't mean that. Okay. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free of my wind and sail, and remember those reasons you're wonderful, and you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beast that washes your wings away, I'll be the beast that you do dream about each day, I'll be the beast that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought you were left long ago, but if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Did she make this for me? Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write about something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome! Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about a beach first, then come up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Uh, can you really see her doing that too? Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy? Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Alright, we're just gonna... We're gonna read everyone else's poem, and then we're gonna be done for this video. Nah, say already needs to say some... She needs some light. Dot dot dot. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. She don't like it. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well... You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you were just for someone else, didn't you? Everybody knows! What the heck, man? I is it that obvious? Probably not Suki. Eh? I didn't like this for anyone specifically. He's lying. He's really lying. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. We're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Sean. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. Come on. Let it out. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Hey! I'm gonna go home a bit early today. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe I can't end the video because look, look, she already going home. I don't like that. Sorry. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. So I don't get to read her poem. Well, I gotta keep going with this just a little longer. Hi, Sean. Yeah, hello, Monica. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being this stuff is one thing. I'm performing a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. Whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It will also make me happy to see. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, I already read your poem. Yeah, you did. You weren't supposed to. But you can go ahead and read mine now. The Lady Who Knows Everything. The old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. A lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning. All purpose. And all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Lost adrift the sky. victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. And when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star coming in the twelfth sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, I fall, and fall more. Gentle as a feather. A dry gill? Expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look into her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer to all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, 
she goes to that my throat and I pick up the ghost Augusta Wind. No. I feel like learning and looking for answers and sort of things that get like me. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of in my mind, so that's what I read about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, what the world start to be smooth? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club refers to a lot of things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. Um, bro. It's just hit me what she's right saying. Like, does she know that we're not, we're actually human and she's a... I'm no young, Monica, what the hell? You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Monica, come on. She, yo, I'm starting to get her games now. Anyway, yo, my eyes are starting to water. I, I'm, when I figure out shit like this, my eyes start to water. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh no, here, what do we got? Are you ever too shy to show you one because you're afraid it's not that good? It can really dishearten you to get a weak in response to something you put as much into. If you find other people who enjoy writing and sharing, it becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling that your writing is good or okay or bad, you don't want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way. You don't want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. She didn't break the fourth wall this time. Alright. I, I, I gotta see what's up Sayori after this, and then we'll be done. I see. I think you're improving your writing in general, Sean. But I can't help to feel a bit foolish. What for? Just, I feel like I kept trying to offer advice, and it should have included me that you prefer a different writing style. I probably just sounded arrogant. I'm so stupid. Really, that's a little... No. You don't understand. I spent too much time worried about what's better and what's worse. Not just with you, with Nasuki and Sayori. It's obvious why nobody has fun in talking to me. Aww. That's sad. And because of that, I'll just keep my mouth shut about your phone. Dot dot dot. Mary burns her head into her arms on her desk. That's not the first time I've seen her do that. I don't think it's ever as bad as you make it sound in your head. Dot dot dot. I think if people really did like talking to you, then it would be a lot more obvious. I know that you like to read deeply into things, but some things are just worth taking that face for value. I just, I've gotten so used to it that it's hard for me to comprehend any other possibility. Got used to what? Reading deeply into things? Being disliked? Yuri. What, what, what am I saying? I'm sorry. I never meant to bring this up. Yuri turns away from me. You should go. Eh? Please, please don't look at me right now. I want to do some thinking. Are you sure? Very not. Alright. I need to be comforting or reassuring her near as possible as it is. So when she wants to be alone, I think anything I say can only make things worse. I feel bad, but thankfully she doesn't take it out of me. I'll wait until she's feeling a bit better. Okay, you three. Well done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring it out? Hold on a sec. Is it just me? Or did you just say something strange right now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. You mean the fact that she said three? That's right. You deviate from the usual catchphrase when addressing the club. A catchphrase? I don't I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? So even Yuri isn't immune to it. But, uh, Staggering air is coming for shouting that something terrible is about to happen. Oh, I feel it too. In your books, maybe. But the only thing different is that Ciara isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Ciara always helps like you a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off of you when she's not around. Where the heck does she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. That's okay, please, show some decency. Oh, come on! Ah, she actually wasn't going too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the time, 
to not go home and pick the time to stop feeling well? So much for YouTube being all lovey dovey. I uh, know. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayari. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? That's that curious expression comes from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, what you didn't answer. You didn't answer. I just asked the question. Monica, yo, how do I feel like this is somehow your fault? This is probably somehow your fault. Anyway, we need to figure out what the rest of festival preparation. So, let's decide what we're going to be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Now, so people will be making cupcakes. But we need a lot of them. And different flavors. Can you handle it out by yourself, Miss Yuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the, the poetry pamphlets. Sarah so will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, dot dot dot. Yuri, you can. Uh, um, you don't have anything for her, do you? No, you don't. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I. I'm useless. No, you're not. Don't think like that, Yuri. No! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Dot dot dot. Now, Nasuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can't tell now. I guess I never gave Sari enough credit, but I could tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader of my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, yeah, about that. I... I love the atmosphere. The expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk focused and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be, in a, you'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, let's just leave you, Sean. The one who's actually truly useless, yeah. Haha, <laughs> don't say that. In fact, both Masuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long, it would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is it Monica, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could get you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be on your butt anyway. And Super tried to remember a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I were calling Nasuki, you mentioned that you like to handle bacon on your own. Shona may not like to be around if you want to be a nuisance. So therefore, you may be more suited to assisting me with decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you've been making it useful for Sean to... Whatever are you saying? It would be extremely meticulous and quick. And baking is it? Just what do you think? Guys, guys! Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Sean to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really got the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? Monica, Monica, stop that. Stop that. So I'm sure he's interested in... You really just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Sean, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah. Of course. Huh. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Well, of course I'm gonna do it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sierra's not even here, so I can't even pick her. You know I gotta go to Natsuki. Your baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys may have sound like a lot of work, so it probably could use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Eh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that, that, that that's because... Dot, dot, dot. Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. That, that's good. Even though Yuri's being melodramatic, it's a little hard to not feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. 
Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome! I don't think that really counts though. What about you, Sean? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Masuki starts pouting too. It's not. I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. Hmm? I think that Yuri just might be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help? That, that doesn't mean. Dot dot dot. Nasuki glances back and forth to me with a worried expression. I feel so bad for Yuri. Look, Masuki goes over and puts her hands on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here, and and you're gonna help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're gonna make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way people feel during the performances. So we need to stop being we need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Masuki leaves her hands and turns around and faces the direction. Dot dot dot. You did you didn't mean that, did you? Um not not really, but Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Mark and I are also taken back by Masuki's words. Masuki of all people to be saying such encouraging words. But I begin to understand. Masuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I could tell she tried to say something to Sayori would say at a time like this. Because they are always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah! I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monk and Yuri too as to chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Oh, she's not letting me go. Eh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. Yeah, because it's you and it's you and me. It's you and me. You literally would have gone, gotten home and realized that you didn't even have the way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? <laughs> oh yeah. You better not make it weird or anything. Listen, it, it, it won't be weird. It won't be weird. Why would I do that? <laughs> my suki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean... I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like I could have a guy over my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah, I'm really going to show you why I love bacon so much. So you better, so you better be looking forward to it. Oh, didn't you say you were just gonna give me all the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Whoa, well, she's starting to go. Go. Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, alright. I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Ah, dot dot dot. Never mind. She was about to say something. I can't believe this. Masuki is going to come to my house on Sunday. Nainzuri shoots through the roof. Even though I got pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling we might end up right outside of school. Knowing that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Sure does. And you best believe he's gonna do it. Or is it too early for that? Listen, it might be, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Only time will tell. But until then, I won't have to, I won't be able to take my mind off of you. I seriously can't wait. 
Hi, this is me. I'm ending it right there. <sighs> this is a long one, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.